BioBalance HealthCast, episode 258, Orgasm and Ejaculation in Men. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. So we're going to be talking about orgasms and ejaculation in men. And when men are younger, uh, there have been a number of studies that have been done about how often young boys, when, when they hit puberty, think about sex. Mm-hmm. And the one I remember, which I don't know if it's scientifically accurate, but the one that I remember from teaching school that I heard regularly was like once every second, seven seconds, a boy thinks about sex. And it makes he, it impossible to teach them that way. Puberty. <laughs> yeah, and, well, it, it really does. They're very distractible and they become other absorbed. But that process of intensity and awareness and arousal and erections when you're young is so spontaneous and so natural and so involved. And when they discover masturbation and or Mm -hmm. sex and they discover ejaculation, that's a whole nother surprise for Mm -hmm. them. And most people seem to see those those two events, orgasm and ejaculation, Mm -hmm. as one thing. And what we have learned is that they are not one thing, mm-hmm. that they're a, com- a combined process that is a result of a lot of physiological, mechanical actions and reactions within the hormonal system mm-hmm. uh, and the musculature. And so today we want to talk about that a little bit because as you age, you begin to have problems with that. Uh, and, and it'll like half of it will fall off and the other half of it may fall off too in terms of your ability to get erections, in terms of your ability to to ejaculate and generate or produce fluid when you ejaculate. Uh, And then a totally separate and distinct concept or experience called orgasm. And one of the, when we were doing the research for this podcast, one of the things that I found very intriguing was some research that was done on quadriplegics and paraplegics. Mm -hmm who are not physiologically capable of having uh, intercourse. They can't feel, and they can't, they can't spontaneously or um, consciously. It, it depends. It really depends on the nature of the injury and the nature of the nerve well, conditions right. in if the it's body. Above, it's above the Sometimes levels Sometimes they can be stimulated to generate uh, sperm and have mm-hmm. ejacula, whether or not they have an orgasm, and then that is often taken and... and uh, used for artificial insemination so they can mm-hmm. still have children. Th- those kind of things can happen, and that's the ejaculation part of it. Mm-hmm. As they get older or as their body deteriorates from their condition, that will diminish mm-hmm. as well. Some of them, though, the orgasm part was, was where I was going with this. Some of them report in the literature that they can have intense emotional and physiological orgasms by stimulating other parts of the body. Above, that you can above their redirect par- the sight of the intensity of the feeling away from the penis uh, and genitalia to some other part of the body. And then they report that they experience what feels to them like the orgasms they they used to have Mm -hmm. when, if they ever had, when they were uh, functional from the genitalia. When they were functional, when they had both motor and sensory neurons that yeah. were working below, the, say, the belly button. Right. So, so yeah, and that and that is very true. And the body's an amazing thing oh, it's, that it it's can incredible. redirect the place that you. I mean, they can be stimulated on the arm, earlobes, or, necks, ear, yeah, uh, anywhere that yeah. they direct that to when they don't have the ability to be stimulated below. Well, that's one of the things the Chinese the learned centuries ago mm-hmm. with feet. It's one of the reasons that they bound the feet of higher class women. Uh, because I didn't they, know this. Culturally, they thought it was more beautiful, this. more attractive, because every culture has its own definition of feminine mm-hmm. attractiveness. But they bound the feet in part to make the under part of the foot so extremely sensitive that it was an erogenous zone and that women would have orgasms when you manipulated the bottom of their foot. Really? Yeah. That's like an entire culture with foot, foot fetish. It, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, they had they had other things, too. The, the higher class you had, the longer your fingernails were. And they put splints and supports. And so you, it was a status sign because you didn't have to use your hands to dress yourself or feed mm-hmm. yourself or labor or, wow. or whatever. So people could identify you. As high class. Yeah. 
Uh, so, I mean, it's just And now we just wear, you know, anthropologically uh, Jimmy, Jimmy Choo shoes. Yeah, so, <laughs> exactly. So, um, Let's, so where this came from when mm -hmm. we started talking about this was that we have a lot of questions about orgasms and ejaculation in men who are aging. And I, as at, when I am in the office seeing patients, the biggest problem I have is I can bring back sexual desire with testosterone mm -hmm. and function and the ability to get an erection in men who are healthy, but oftentimes... We can't just give testosterone and end up with ejaculation. Right. So men feel that they aren't complete because they are having orgasms and they ha have an erection. But, but what's they, always happened in their life isn't happening now. Yeah, because it always so, used right. to come together. And now it is separate. They still get orgasms. They still feel good. They still feel the release, but they don't feel physical release by ejaculating, or they notice that they don't have very much ejaculatory fluid. Right. And that's disturbing to them. And yeah. and, and I understand it's why. it's disturbing to their partner who expects it and then begins to say, are you putting this somewhere else so that you don't <laughs> oh, have even, it for me? I didn't even really think about because it. Because suddenly you're not able to do The this. psychologist in well, you people, and the counselor people come to my you. office with those complaints <laughs> right. to say, what's going on here? And what I've learned from the years that I've been working with you is so much more about the physiology that I did not know in terms of answering those questions or responding to those circumstances. So I feel that that I'm in a better position now to talk to people about some of those things than I once was because now I know things like oxytocin. And I know that you were telling me the other day there's an inhaler mm -hmm. uh, for oxytocin. A nasal spray for oxytocin yeah. and, a, and a tablet that you can put under your tongue. So, so what happens is some people get their testosterone and they can have an orgasm and they have and that means testosterone stimulates their MSH which is their uh, melanin stimulating hormone which mm -hmm. makes them sleep well and and it stimulates them sleeping after sex then it also stimulates their oxytocin which gives them the feeling of well-being and happiness and and social sociability and mm -hmm. and and it makes them feel wanted and cared for so that, that's oxytocin. So testosterone often stimulates those two hormones. Well, sometimes we take medication or we have problems genetically, that connection has disappeared or that has we've had a head injury or something's happened so that testosterone isn't enough to make those two things happen. So we give them testosterone for all the other reasons, the blood flow and, and being able to have an erection and hold an erection, but we also might have to give them oxytocin before they have sex so that they can actually feel the uh, orgasm. Because some people have ejaculation without orgasm. They don't feel the, 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 the release just, and the ful fulfillment of uh -huh. having sex. So that's that can also be something that's very disturbing to people. So I get all of these things in terms of complaints from my patients when they first come to see me. And then as we go through their process of talking to them and saying, okay, so we fixed this part. Well, and then where's exactly. that part? <laughs> so, so you break those component events down that's it, perceived as a global event. We had sex and it was great. But you break it down into <laughs> that's usually subsets all, or steps. Most people, that's all they... Well, that's what they're aware of as yeah. long as everything's working. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh, that was great. But <laughs> when things start to not work, then you start to say, well, why? And it could be that you're having erectile issues with blood flow in the penis. or And that's testosterone. Uh, and, and there di are and it can be diabetes. medicines and yeah, fluid yeah. control medicines that, to work with that. Uh, it can be an arousal issue because mm -hmm. of oxytocin, uh, oxytocin or MSH or testosterone or relationship attraction. You mm -hmm. know, if you're mad, if you're angry, if you're, you know, whatever. Uh, so There's you have a to lot separate of that out to say, well, let's talk about your, you know, are you still attracted to this person? What defines that attraction? Mm -hmm. And how do you experience it? Uh, I basically say, see, on all the psychological stuff, I say, so do you still like your spouse yeah. or do you still like your partner? Basically, I say I, I don't have the same skills as Brett does. So I say, so are you still like, is this still a good thing for you? Or are you like not interested even after you've got testosterone? Because the only test is you give them testosterone and then are they still still interested in their partner? Because and the otherwise, testosterone helps enormously. Because, because I, I've had couples come in where one of them is saying, 
I just don't feel it anymore. But God, I still love this person mm-hmm. and I want to be with them, but mm-hmm. I don't want to have sex with them. And they get testosterone and that's the only thing that changes. And then they're like, whoo. Yeah. Now something's now going on. Now they're attracted and now they feel like having sex. So yeah. testosterone is, is the first step so that I can rule out that chemical reason right. that somebody's, that let's go with guys, that a guy's not having um, an orgasm or and or an ejaculation. But let's walk down the path of we we treat we know that the that my the uh, patient in front of me the man in front of me is is has his testosterone and then comes back to me everything's working fine except either he can't ejaculate or when he does it's not it doesn't feel like it used to he doesn't feel the fluid coming out or his partner notices it's not coming out and they've settled their you know are you seeing somebody else issues so so this is where i start having to go through the process of having them get used to a new normal mm-hmm. because it's very hard to improve ejaculation mm-hmm. it's imp- hard to improve the fluid it comes from there are some the supplements though that you give that prostate. do help right i i do help that i mean it's not untreatable it's just that it's a little more difficult than just giving testosterone and having everything be fine mm-hmm. so we also have to give oxytocin does help with the ejaculate Mm-hmm. So sometimes we try the oxytocin, but the easiest things are to take L-arginine and mm-hmm. ornithine. Those are two amino acids that you can take in a supplement, and that usually increases the amount of ejaculate. So that's one thing you can do, and that's something you can do all by you know on your own. You can take those over the counter and see if that makes a difference. It also makes a difference in growth hormone. So it also helps muscles. If you have any testosterone at all, it helps muscle growth, and and it helps growth hormone means basically that you get leaner. So it helps weight. So those are the reasons we give that. But for this purpose, we would give L-arginine and ornithine that, and see how that works. And I'd rule out other things. If you're on a diuretic, if you're on something for blood pressure, and you're drying your body out, then your ejaculate's not going to be there because you don't have enough fluid in your body. Uh, if you're on blood pressure medicine and your blood pressure is too low, it's going to it is going to cause a problem with both erections and ejaculation. So then I have a question, and I don't know the answer. I expect you will. If if a man is taking uh, not an ED drug, but a, an arousal enhancing drug like Viagra or Cialis. That is an ED drug. It is an ED drug. Does that redirection of body fluids into blood flow for the penis to be erect mm-hmm. cause a diminishment of ejacula? In general, no. It okay. would help because it, it, it increases nitrogen in the area, mm-hmm. increases sensitivity, it increases um, the neurologic function that... that um, makes the neurons more sensitive and and dilates the blood vessels basically it's not going to decrease ejaculate it would more likely increase it okay but but the other drugs that we take the drugs that aren't for having sex can can actually be roadblocks and usually i find figure this out first when patients come in they give me all their meds and and if they can change a med i try to change those meds that might affect their uh, production of ejaculate because if that bothers them then I'm I'm going to attend to it and try to change something that we can put something equal in its place but it won't bother either erections or ejaculation so if you're on blood pressure medicine if you're on a diuretic one of the ways you could change this is to to load up on fluid on days you know you're going to have sex so you hydrate yourself. Right. So lots of clear fluid, lots, I mean, lots of water. Mm-hmm. And hydrating yourself is really important. If you're dehydrated, you're never going to, no matter how old you are, you're not going to make ejaculate. You just don't have the fluids to actually make it. Mm-hmm. So that that's important to have the fluid necessary. And a lot of the drugs that we give people dry them out. Well, we're talking about people that are losing uh, fluid volume or mm-hmm. capacity to ejaculate. Mm-hmm. There's a, a sidebar to this conversation as well that many men, su- some men suffer from, uh, called premature ejaculation. Yes. And they are in the process of having sex or uh, the arousal level, of the intensity is so high that they ejaculate and then lose their erection 
sometimes mm-hmm. even before they have penetration right. or they have penetration, but they immediately ejaculate. Mm-hmm. And so there's not that process ability to satisfy their partner. Mm-hmm. And that causes a good deal of relationship distress mm-hmm. and, and interpersonal concern. Well, so, many times testosterone does help that. Yes. Because testosterone stimulates serotonin mm-hmm. and serotonin helps with prolonging the erection before ejaculation. You know, we give uh, antidepressants Mm -hmm. that stimulate serotonin to people who have premature ejaculation to lengthen the amount of time that they can they can have an erection before they before they ejaculate right so and testosterone stimulates serotonin as well so it may get you halfway there and then we may have to use um, Prozac or and, so and or behavioral skill sets that can that are learnable. Yes, and there those are, are that's there are your things that that's you can your, do if you have problems in this area. area. One of those things that you can do is practice Kegel exercises, just mm-hmm. like women do after they've had babies, to tighten the musculature between the rectum and the penis. It's to exercises just you can do. Squeeze it, relax. Squeeze it, relax. Mm-hmm. You can do that like a five count on your own when you're driving in the car. When you're watching the baseball game, what, and just strengthen those muscle walls to help give you more control. And it's hard to describe kegels. I've even had trouble <laughs> describing kegels to women. You know, yeah, basically yeah. you're trying to just like scrunch everything. Yeah, together. You, yeah. You just kind of like isometrics. Like, like you're trying to not have a bowel movement or not go to the bathroom. It's kind of like that. But mm-hmm. some of the other things you do with for men and women is to you, strengthen you could be those muscles. Practicing that now, and we wouldn't know. Right. I mean, it's, yeah, not, it's a not a visible, visible, stressful strain component. It's just contracting of those muscles with deliberation. And we're and not, repetition. or I'm not. I don't know about him. I refuse, but I'm not. I've never I'm not doing it on camera. Never confess. Never apologize. <laughs> but uh, but one of the things you can do, both men and women can do this, is to to help them. Sometimes women have orgasms too fast as well. So you may want to strengthen the muscles. Right. And uh, one of the ways they do that is that as they're urinating, you stop the stream. Right. And then you start it. And then you can stop it. Yeah. And you start it. Volitionally on purpose. On purpose. Not because suddenly you're older and you have prostate issues. No. And the stream stops. No, but, you, and you but, but on command, yeah. you stop the stream right. and start it. The other thing women can do is while they're having intercourse, they can... They can uh, tighten their muscles to tighten around the penis or the, or the, um, um, <laughs> what I don't want to say the word with D. <laughs> okay. Uh, so. <laughs> I might offend people. I already have. A, a sidebar piece of that in terms of the skill set for developing the Kegel muscles is regulated breathing. If you concentrate on your breathing and you do some deliberate pacing of your breathing, when you when you start to become hyper aroused and move to the end game, that an organ, orgasm or a release is about to occur, you can slow that process down if you teach yourself to mm-hmm. do that. And and men that suffer from premature ejaculation need to learn the connection and concentrate on their breathing, which helps distract them consciously from the rush to finish but also helps give them motor control to delay the rush to finish. And the opposite thing is they always hold their breath. Right. You know, they say, oh, well, I wasn't breathing. I was, <gasps> I was trying not to. <laughs> oh, no, <you laughs> don't hold your breath. You need to concentrate on breathing deep and slow. It's almost like meditative breathing, mm-hmm. not don't breathe. Right. And so, so, But our natural, uh, the natural uh, response is, I'm, I'm tense. I'm, I'm going to hold my breath and not. So we've talked mostly about ejac- ejacula and ejaculation. I want to talk a little bit about orgasm, especially a, a, a thing that research shows and that I've found in, in my work with couples is that as men age, they often can change their focus. Younger men seem to be focused on ejaculation slash orgasm as the end product of every sexual encounter how fast you can do it, how often you can do it, that's the measure of success. Reload and to go again Re- and that kind of recovery stuff. Recovery time and, and what mm-hmm. can they do? What men who begin to have problems with ejaculation have an opportunity to discover is that they can become aware and concentrate on orgasm whether or not there mm-hmm. is any ejaculate. Mm-hmm. And in becoming aware of those things, what the the skill sets that you learn from becoming aware of that allow you an opportunity to become more conscious and aware of your partner and of the whole level that we call intimacy. Mm-hmm. And people report 
much more tense orgasms with or without fluid release mm -hmm. and more repetitive multi orgasmic mm -hmm. uh, experiences mm -hmm. uh, and more satisfying orgasms that if you if it's kind of like we tell men when they first start to have erectile issues a lot of times it's stress a lot of times it's pressure uh, we've even you and I have talked to couples where we say don't put pressure on him because right. once a man starts to worry about an erection he's not gonna be able to get one Right. It's in his head, and he can't get there. Even if he uh, has everything, everything else is working, else is working and, and he should be no, able no, to, no. Yeah, so his brain can control it by work. fear. So what begins to happen then is that they're not so focused on their own penis or their own release. They're focused on the intimacy of the moment with the woman or, or partner, who, whoever that partner might be, and they report a great deal more satisfaction and a great deal more success whether or not they have minimal amounts of ejacula or not. They've done studies that show that that um, on on brain blood flow, you can see what parts of the brain are being stimulated. Right. And they have done studies that show that you still light up your brain, basically all the outflow of all your neurotransmitters, right. kind of like it shows an intense like release. Fourth of July, even when you haven't had an ejaculation. Exactly. So they're separate in terms of the the brain activity, which is what you're really looking for is that release and that and that calmness and that but also that tie to whoever who your spouse, your partner. So that's that all can happen in your brain, which is where all orgasms happen. And uh and they, it has nothing to do with ejaculation, except that the timing is often the same. Right, right. So uh, micro seconds apart, to the degree that an individual can't distinguish and separate it out, mm -hmm. but science can. You know, one of the last thing I wanted to make sure that we talked about was that ejac ejaculation is a much more complicated neurologic function than erections. Erections are basically neurons stimulating a blood flow to open up all your uh, all of your arteries and stop blood flow from leaving the penis and basically it just happens it's a one time one activity thing. Mm -hmm. But having an ejaculation takes both your sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. It takes a series of activities to actually cause the prostate and the epididymis to produce fluid mm -hmm. and actually have it come out at that time and not just a little bit at a time, but have it all come out at once. So all of these things are complex neurologic uh, processes that have to be coordinated. And sadly, we take so many medications that interfere with this that no one really talks about, no one really tells you about because they're, they're trying to keep doctors job is to keep you alive this is a very in their mind a very and i'm a doctor but sidebar a issue. very minor issue right. to them yet it's a very major issue to you so that's something that you have to ask your doctor to look at all the medications you're on well for example antidepressants right. many of the antidepressants inhibit sexual arousal and sexual success and if they don't tell you that and you don't know that and you're taking an antidepressant you're going to have some relational issues. It can cause you not to have an orgasm and not to have an ejaculation both. And to lose the whole thing in the middle of it. Right. So suddenly it's like, what's on TV? And your partner's going, <laughs> wait a minute, we're not through here. Yeah. You know, it's really distressing. So you do need to talk to your doctor and you do need to find out about the elements of medicine. Uh, if you want to know more about the control mechanisms for the intensities of the orgasms, whether or not there's ejacula, uh, do a Google search for tantric, T-A-N-T-R-I-C, or orgasms. You might find some interesting stuff there. Uh, if you're interested in women and orgasms and ejaculation that women have, come back next week because that's what we're going to be talking about. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the BioBalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit BioBalanceHealth.com or call 314-993-0963. 
You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.